Around a year ago, if you were to have asked me about an $800 e-bike, I would have likely said no thanks. And if you were to add that it were a folding e-bike, definitely not on my radar. Well, it turns out that if you take a folding e-bike and add small fat tires, my attention gets piqued. One of my favorite bikes is a fat tire folder. And that's what I told Onway when they contacted me about doing this review. I have a more powerful version of roughly the same bike, but they were pretty confident and sent this anyway. They sell this for $7.99 on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description as well as a coupon code that they provided to give free shipping. And to be honest, I didn't really expect much. In pictures, it looks kind of like an off-the-shelf bike, and I also wasn't sure about that exposed battery styling. But once I got it unboxed, I mean, it does have a lot of what I expected, but a few surprises, and it definitely has that 20-inch fat tire charm. Plus, this has a suspension fork, and I'm really curious to see what difference this makes in the fat tire experience. This bike has a 350 watt motor and a stated top speed of 15 to 18 miles per hour, so class one and not as fast as a 28 I'm used to, but I know 20 inch fat tire bikes are notoriously fun. So I couldn't wait to rip through some back alleys on it at its max speed. My first impression and the first thing that jumps out at me is that like the Schwinn e-bike I recently reviewed, this one has a gradual power up to the pedal assist. I've spoke before about how affordable e-bikes usually are kind of on off with the power. These manufacturers are starting to get smart and fade the power in. So bikes like this with a cadence sensor, if set up properly, they can do a respectable job. And the Schwinn got it totally right, and the Onway's very close, though it is still possible to run out of pedal on this bike at the top speed, 18 to 20 miles per hour. We'll talk about that more in a second. At 18 miles per hour, I'd be pedaling like mad here to try and keep up, so I've learned to just pedal at whatever pace I want to keep the bike up to its top speed. I'm thinking one of those 11 tooth freewheels will perfectly mesh with this setup, and I'll try that soon. Speed-wise, I'm not going to go through all the individual assist settings, but the Onway will cruise at its slowest between 6 and 8 miles per hour, and throttle only will hit about 15. Now remember, I said the top speed was rated at 15 to 18 miles per hour, but I also mentioned 20 miles per hour, which I can do if I pedal like mad, and right at 20 I feel the power cut off, only to kick back in as it drops below 20. So that's the actual top speed. The 350 watt motor, it's reasonably quiet even at top speed and kind of blends with the roar of those little fat tires for the most part, but it can be heard. Now I've already mentioned cadence sensor multiple times and usually bikes that have one require a half or a full rotation of the crank arms to engage the motor. The Onway only requires a one quarter rotation, which means it doesn't take much to start the power and I think I like this better. And the Onway, like my other 20 inch folding fat tire e-bike, it's equally nimble and there's enough pedal clearance to keep the power assist working even during more aggressive riding. And it's easier to get more aggressive thanks to the front suspension. Fat tires alone do give some smoothing, but pair fat tires with a suspension fork and the dampening is immediately noticeable. Especially when I took this to the same uneven and broken sections of sidewalk that I'd ridden on a fat tire rigid fork e-bike. Now it is still fun on a rigid fork bike, but this is like icing a cupcake. And now I can ride over curbs regularly. And it's good enough that I'm not looking for occasions to put it to work. Suspension though, that's just one facet of what this 799 fat tire folder is, and I'm surprised to see what that low price can buy today in terms of fit and finish. And I believe the ride is a testament to that. Now this isn't 28 miles per hour fast, and it's likely not going to outclass a more expensive bike, but it is equally nimble and smooth. So how is the Onway equipped? Well let's take a look at the components. It has a standard scooter style folding e-bike handlebar setup. There's an HA branded stalk with a security folding latch mechanism. The bar is also adjustable height wise via quick release. There's a two bolt stem cap keeping these bars in place. I prefer a four bolt, but the two bolt will work. The grips are rubber. It's a soft rubber, but they're thin, so marginal comfort. The throttle is a twist throttle and it has a nice spring back action. Feels good and solid. The Shimano Mickey Mouse shifters, I mean, these work, but with the throttle for takeoff, I really only shift on large hills. Which, as you can see here, in the lowest gear and the highest pedal assist setting, I can climb the steepest main hill in town at around 5 to 6 miles per hour. There's also a bell. It's one of the cheap spring type. It's mounted upside down, which actually works better. The computer isn't fancy and it doesn't have a large screen, but it is functional. It's easy to use and to read, even in broad daylight. Function examples in just a moment. 
The head tube graphics, I have no idea what this is. It looks sort of cool. Maybe it's wings or waves. I don't know. And the big ticket item, as far as I see it on this bike, is the suspension fork paired with those fat wheels. Now this isn't a super high end fork, but it's also not the absolute bottom end. It does have a preload adjustment, and I think it's a fairly specced setup. Mounted to that fork is a usably bright single LED headlight. The frame, and most of this bike, is 6061 aluminum. It has a black satin finish that's accented with orange, gray, and white graphics. I like the look and the colors. It's not overdone. The frame also has an integrated carry handle, and with the curves right after the battery box, it has a minimalistic appeal for a folding design. The knobby tires are 20 by 4.0. Actually, they're around 3.75. They're Chow Yang branded. Those are fit to alloy drilled fat tire wheels. The hubs are Quando branded, and the front wheel is a quick release. Brake wise, the levers are alloy Wuxing branded, but the brakes themselves, Tektro M280 mechanical discs with 160mm rotors fit to both the front and the rear. The pedals are folding plastic Welgos, and the crank arms, Pro Wheel forged alloy, 170mm. There's a single Pro Wheel chainring tooth, 48 tooth. Bottom bracket's a square taper cartridge type, and this is a first. The cadence sensor, it's on the chain ring side, and it has exposed magnets. Now, I don't see this as a problem per se, but it is interesting. At the very least, we can now see how a cadence sensor is set up on the inside. The rest of the drivetrain is exactly what I expect at this price. A torny rear derailleur, a 14 to 28 tooth freewheel, and that 350 watt hub motor. Here's the model number for the motor heads out there. Now this exposed battery design, as I've mentioned before, the look's grown on me, as has the easy installation and removal. The speed sensor itself sits in a plastic box below the battery and behind the bottom bracket. And in front of it, the metal rest stand for when the bike is folded. All the cabling is neatly routed and wrapped in a phone cord looking wrap. And behind the battery box are rack mounts. And this is for an optionally available rack that I'm told also fits the Rad Mini. There's an included tail light too, it's a blaze light, LED, it comes with two batteries, triple A's, and the seat looks slightly sporty, I mean it looks good but it's really not all that comfortable, especially on longer rides, but it has that lever. Let's talk about that and a few other things. To the bike barn. When I first looked at the bike I thought the seat clamp was backwards and then I discovered that this was for a reason. And that seat lever, it allows the saddle to tilt so the battery can be installed and removed. It's really a genius design. It helps keep the bike length down and it works so well that I've shown it off and removed the battery and reinstalled it countless times, way more than necessary. Let's take a closer look at the battery itself. It has an LED meter on the top and that red, it's normal. It lets you know when you're on the last bar. It's a lithium ion, 36 volt, 10.4 amp hour. On one side there's a keyed lock that also works as the on off switch. On the opposite side is the charge port and it's unique, largely unique. That's because of the charger itself which is easy to use. It has simple red and green LED lights and then there's that charge plug. I mean look at this thing. Looks like a plug that would be seen on a 1970s computer in a yard sale or something. It's very industrial and I assume that means it's durable. It does work just with a freakish look. Now let's look at the computer. It's LED backlit with plus or minus buttons and a menu button. It easily cycles through the five pedal assist modes and the menu button selects either speed, trip meter, odometer, ride time, average speed, or max speed. There's also a menu by double clicking the plus and minus buttons and it controls all the options for the computer and I won't go through the settings but there are quite a few. And there's also a sub menu for even more control options. I'm often asked about seat height on bikes. This one at its lowest setting is 34 inches from the ground and a max height fully extended of around 42 and a half inches. I showed you the handlebar stem quick release earlier. And these bars are extendable up to around 50 inches from the ground at the center of the grip. Folded, it kind of looks like a jumbled mess, but it does reduce storage space. And there's an order from the chaos because with a few folds and a few clamp snaps, the bike is ready for action. The bike arrived pretty much set up. The only thing that needed attention was one screw on the battery guide rail. My only real complaint is something that I'm starting to see many other manufacturers of e-bikes starting to do, and that's to make it where the key has to be in the bike for it to work. I'm not a fan of this. It may marginally increase battery life, but most of us keep a single keychain. I don't like the idea of all my keys, house, and all my expensive key fobs dangling off the sides as I bolt around at 20 miles per hour. Not to mention if I'm out riding and it starts raining or key fobs even waterproof. I play it safe and I keep my e-bike keys separate from my other keys. A little annoying, but better safe than sorry. 
Performance wise, it takes four to six hours to charge the battery, and I got 14.2 miles on my first charge, 16.2 on my second. The instructions say it takes five to ten charge cycles before max output is achieved. I like this bike, and I think it's $7.99. The performance matches well with the cost. I also like the look, the exposed battery, and the low sitting fat tires. Kind of reminds me of a bulldog. I do want to mention one thing, because there are similar e-bikes out there, some only cost a bit more, like my electric XP. But here's the thing, there are people out there for whom an extra $100 may as well be an extra $100,000. If you don't have it, you work with the available funds you do have. So with that in mind, for under $800 for an e-bike that's folding and has fat tires, I'm impressed with the Onway. Now I say Onway because this doesn't really have a model name aside from HF-201701D. Onway just sounds cooler. Either way, I've enjoyed riding it and this is what I know about it thus far. I'll probably be making a few mods, so share your thoughts and your opinions on the bike down in the comments section. Like, subscribe, and all that. Thanks for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.